for instance, on a magnetic tape, if you have a bit stream, you review the bits in order as a pulse train comes off. The competitive systems on digital sound on film have a pulse train. Uh, we do it a different way. We actually look, on, with, essentially with a video camera, at the block that's on in between the sprocket holes and determine where the four corners are with these little marks that are in each corner called Barker code marks. That enables us to build up a two-dimensional matrix of where the bit should be in that, s in that square, in that particular block. And then look at each individual point where a bit should be to determine whether it's a black or a white, uh, a plus or a minus. And only then, having done that recovery and correction, string out a pulse train. So by doing that video analysis before you ever try and come up with a pulse train, you do a lot of error correction and restoration uh, much more effectively than you ever could do if you try and instantly read it out as a pulse train. That makes the system extremely rugged. And a couple of other uh, things we did that, that are improvements over conventional digital technology that are uniquely applied to film. One is called uh, um, splice caching. We discovered that, that most of the problems you get reading digital data off the film happens at the end of the 2,000 foot reels, the splices. And the reason for this is that the operator will glue the two reels together, they get dust and dirt. The splice tape itself will cause problems with the digital data. So we discovered that the biggest problems we had were always with the two or three feet at the end of the reel. So we have some blocks that are what we call bogus blocks, dummy blocks, during the course of the reel. And we replicated the data that comes up in that final two feet through the course of the reel. And so that's built up into a buffer as the reel goes through. And if you get to the end of the reel and there's a missing block, you look it up in this other register and here's the block to replace it with. And another thing we actually have is that uh, what we call dynamic loading is that we also use those bogus blocks to carry the latest revision of software for the theatre unit so that beginning of real one of the movie. The version of software that's on the film is compared with the version that's actually in the processor in the cinema. If the version on the film is more up to date than the one in the processor, you revert to analog for a very short time, beginning of the reel, reload a totally new software operating system into flash ROM and switch it over so that the theater is updated automatically without even knowing it. This is akin to driving into the gas station load your car up with gas and discover you've got a new set of tires as you drive out without even knowing it you know it's that's a pretty nice operation so it gives us a chance to update without having to force theaters into buying or installing new hardware that, that's a very attractive thing because it's it's a technology that's constantly on the move and I guess we've done three dynamic loads in the last uh, few years the way we've we've put in new versions of software and they gradually spread around the theaters it's it's you watch them migrating the latest version.